Welcome to Daily Armor. Today's verse we'll find in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 8. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 8. <clears throat> and it says, Whom having not seen, ye love, and whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Ye rejoice unspeakable. Unspeakable. I mean, we have unspeakable joy over somebody that we have not seen. And this is what the scripture is talking about. We have not seen Jesus, yet we love him. And we love him because he first loved us. He showed us, he demonstrated his love for us. Um, he shared his love with us. And we, when we accept him, when we have accepted him as our savior, we are, we are giving back that love to him. And for the Christian, we have joy that is absolutely unspeakable. Um, I was praying a little earlier and I was just asking the Lord to help me with the devotion today. And I even said in, in what I was praying, cause I, I wrote it out this morning. Um, Lord, I don't have words to describe what I want to express. I don't have the right words. I don't have, um, I can't get it out how, what I feel on the inside because it says even in the scripture, I love how scripture just gives you what you need, but it says that we rejoice with joy unspeakable. We can't even, we can't even explain it. We can't even put it into proper words. Um, and I was thinking about that whom having not seen and it just for some reason it made me remember um, one of one I have so many favorite verses but one of one of the verses that I really really like to go to as well um, is found in the book of John and you don't have to turn there if you don't want to but it's something that um, you should read John chapter 17 um, pretty much the whole chapter it's, it's Jesus is praying and thinking about that that we're we love somebody that we have not seen with our physical eyes we have seen him with our spiritual eyes and that's hard to explain to, to lost people they don't understand why we have joy unspeakable they don't understand how that we could love somebody that we haven't physically seen with our with our eyes but we have seen him in so much better way we have experienced the love of God in such a more uh, in such a, a much better way than we could even describe and um, if you'll if you're if you open to John chapter 17 the verse that I really like to just remind myself of is found in verse number 20 verse number 20 says neither pray I for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. So Jesus is praying here in John chapter 17, and I do challenge you to read the whole chapter. Um, he is, is praying for himself, and then he's praying for the disciples. And if and if you'll notice the wording in, chapter, in verse number 20 of this chapter, of chapter 17, he is praying for you, and he's praying for me. He's praying for those who shall believe who will believe through their word, that's talking about through their testimony, through their preaching, and it's just handed down generation after generation, and we're still, um, have, preachers are still preaching the same thing that the disciples were preaching um, at the beginning of the church age. And so through their word, others are gonna believe, and others are gonna be saved, and others are gonna know the love of, of Jesus like we do. And that's talking about um, it's talking about that we believe and we love him and yet we have not seen him um, and he knew that and he prayed for us so I'm gonna read verse number 20 one more time um, this breeze feels amazing out here verse number 20 says neither pray I for these alone and these alone is talking about he was praying for his disciples but he's praying to the father and he's telling the father he said Lord I don't just pray for my disciples the ones that I have now but I'm praying for all those in the future um, and I challenge you to read what he prayed um, and how he prayed for them and ultimately that's how he was praying for us as well because he said these prayers are not just for these disciples but they're also for those to come so neither pray I for these alone but for them also which shall believe that's you and that's me and that 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 gets me so excited that I was on his mind before he went to the cross um, I was on his mind 
um, as he was on the cross, he knew all of us. He knows all of us. It's not just that he knew us and that he was praying for us in advance, that he is still making intercession to the Father today. He is still praying for us. He is still going to the Father on our behalf. We have access to the Father because of him. Um, and the, he is praying for us right here in the scripture. You and I are in the Bible. We're in his word because he mentions us because that's how important. You think about all the important people that are in the Bible. And maybe some days you don't feel very important, but you are important. You're important enough that he mentioned you and he mentioned me in, the, in his word because he said, For those which shall believe on me through their word. He's saying you're going to... You're going to hear the word. You're going to hear the preaching. You're going to be convicted. The Holy Spirit is going to is going to convict you that you're lost. He's going to tell you that you need to be saved. Um, and you, you, those that believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that's who the, he's talking about in this verse number 20, that shall believe. And that just gets me excited. Um, and if you read, like I said, I challenge you to read um, chapter number 17, um, especially if you, um, if you back up to um, verse number 6. This is when he really is starting to pray for his disciples. At the beginning of the chapter number 1, or verse number 1 of chapter 17, he's praying for himself. He's fixing to go to the cross. He's fixing, that's fixing to take place. Um, and he is praying um, for himself through that. And he's also praying for the disciples that he has. And he's also praying for those of us that we're going to be coming after that. And I challenge you to read what, he, what was on his mind those hours before. And that I was on his mind and you were on his mind. And that we're still on his mind. He's still making intercession for us today. And that just gets me excited and I hope it gets you excited. Um, we have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full of glory. So God gets the glory in everything. And even when we can't explain it, um, there's something about us that is different to others. And they don't understand why that we're excited or happy or joyful even in the midst of um even in the midst of situations which seem like there's no hope that we that our hope is in jesus and no matter how things turn out um we're a winner either way so people don't understand that and they they're drawn to us for some reason they'll they'll come to you they'll come to me will you pray for me about this they come to you because they they realize they don't have access to pray they've tried to pray and maybe you know they have they have they have tried to pray and they just feel like nothing's happening um and that is the truth if if they're not saved then they don't have access um, and that's why they come to us and we should take those prayers seriously stop and pray with them right there um, If somebody asks you to pray about something if you or, or, or where you can stop and pray with them right that minute um, my neighbor miss Donna and um, She's went home to be with the Lord. She's in heaven, but she was the first person who did that with me. She um we were talking, I don't even remember what the prayer request was about, but we were talking, it was in my front yard. She was down at, I don't even know why she was down at my house. She probably was bringing, bringing blueberries or something. She always had wonderful blueberries. Um, one of the fond memories that Kinsley has is going to her house and picking blueberries with Sydney. And um, so she was at my house and we were talking about, um, I, I think I had a, a prayer request about something. I don't remember what the request was, but I did have something to pray about. And Miss Donna said, let's pray about it right now. Let's pray about it right now. She said, let's not put it off. Let's pray about it right We stood right there in my front yard um, and we prayed together. She prayed for me about the, whatever it was that was that was heavy on my mind, heavy on my heart. And we prayed together and that meant so much to me. And uh, if we'll do that with others, um, if, the, if it's at all possible, pray right there with them, whether it's um, over the phone, whether it's in, you know, at work or, or at, at home or at the grocery store, wherever you might be, just stop and pray. Not trying to draw attention from anybody else, but just cherishing the moment that, um, and you may be like me and I may forget later. Um, if I don't write things down, I have so much that goes through my mind that I, if I don't write it down, I'll forget. So I'm better off if I just stop and pray with that person right then. If I just stop and if, if I get a text from one of my friends, I pray right that minute because if I don't, I'm going to forget. 
Um, and, if, and if you are where you can write it down, it's wonderful when we write those prayer requests down and that we do add them to um, what we pray um, later when we, when we do have that separated time with the Lord. But um, don't forget to pray for, for others and pray for one another. And don't forget that the Lord was praying for you before he went to the cross and he was praying for me and I am so excited. And we have that joy unspeakable and full, full of glory over Jesus who we've not seen with our physical eyes but oh man have we seen him with our spiritual eyes and we try to share that with others and even when we're lost for words um, he comes through he, is, he shines through our life and so I just uh, thank you for joining me today and I hope to see you again soon